Hey everyone, Ryan here. So what I'm gonna actually do, since we're just under a week away from with this new Scream movie, which is actually gonna be Scream 5, but still, just by itself, the title will be called Scream. So don't get this confused with the original title that was in 1996. But what I'm like to do is make a timeline whereabouts where this uh, Scream 5 actually lies. I'm gonna say Scream 5 throughout this movie because I'm gonna be talking about all four previous uh, Screams in the series. But I'm gonna go back to 1996 and work our stuff up into this uh, time of 2022, of course. So 1996, that was 26 years ago. I remember going to that 25th anniversary last year and I had a great time in the theater. And I got, it, it, just, it was just great to see Ed Scream again back on the big screen. But talking about Scream, okay, so what this this first story is, oh, off the bat too, I'm gonna say too, if you guys have not seen uh, this Scream movies leading up to the fourth one, I uh, will be talking about uh, who the killers were, who Ghostface actually was. So if you don't want to listen to this, uh, turn away or put it on mute. Just watch me uh, go. No, I'm not actually on mute as it is. I'm just uh, demonstrating as it is. But I just want to uh, actually talk about the, these films to see if there's any key points we might actually be able to catch in this. Because in this uh, newest film, there says something about the past. Ghostface seems to actually say that. So... Let's get to start. Okay, so we actually start with that screen. Uh, the story uh, is actually about a character named, her name's uh, Sydney. Now, of course, after, it seems this whole thing actually really took place a year after her mom actually dying and trying to find out who really actually uh, killed her, her mom. So throughout this uh, movie, in the beginning parts of this uh, portion of this movie, we keep seeing the key point, uh, the one that's actually in jail as it is as uh, Cotton Weary. And uh, who's the one that's really behind uh, him? It's uh, Gail Weathers trying to uh, say he's a, just a victim. He's not the true suspect in, in this crime. Yeah, he might have been a part of, of Maureen uh, Prescott, which was uh, Sydney's uh, mom. She had a big deal with this, but there's something more with this, this as well, too. So this face does not reveal himself until the very last, of course, 15, 20 minutes of the film. I think it's more like 15, I think. And we find out it's actually a... Sydney's uh, boyfriend, believe it or not, Billy. Billy Loomis, along too. His uh, friend uh, Stuart is along with the line too to help them out too. So they actually pin this whole thing on Cotton Ware, making him uh, feel like he actually killed Sydney's mom, but it's, he they, he actually didn't believe it or not. They're trying to uh, do this anniversary thing within one year, trying to uh, kill Sydney's friends, uh, trying to frame her as it is. But that doesn't seem the case because it seems like most of these movies, uh, the villains do not usually win. So we actually see Billy and Stuart actually dying in this one. So we think anyways. We know we saw Billy, I think. But we, everyone's uh, anticipating and think, uh, thinking that uh, Stuart might actually still be alive. Even being crushed with the TV to his head as it is. Something there? I don't know. But anyways, let's move on to uh, Scream 2 now. Scream 2 takes in place uh, two years after the first uh, Scream. Uh, uh, Sydney's trying to... Uh, to get everything, trying to uh, go to college, get, get her education and everything. But things start reflecting back once again as it is from the past. And uh, the past comes to kick her in the butt once again, I should say. <laughs> but um, the first uh, 10 minutes, I gotta say, uh, seems to be the thing in these movies. Because we in the first uh, screen, we saw uh, Drew Barrymore get the, the, the final act on her. And the second one, Jada Pinker, uh Smith was in this, Omar Epps. Were the two victims uh, in the first ten minutes? I, I like the like the way they actually built this up. It was in the movie theater, and they're getting ready to watch uh, this the stab uh, movie, and it, the original stab, I should say. And throughout this whole movie, we find out uh, that Gail Weathers made this uh, a, a book, anyways, I should say. But the book went to the, uh, the big screens. That always happens in the case you know that books make it to the big screen as it is. We see the movie. Uh, Heather Graham seemed to play it. Uh, Tori Spelling happened to play uh, Sydney, but anyways, my whole point with this is uh, trying to find out who is behind these ghost places once again. We find out there is a college um, friend that she should not trust. It seems like in these films with the scream, never trust anybody. Who said that? Randy's always the one actually saying that. To, uh, who's the one that surpassed a, a sequel? And he talks really fast as it is, saying, who, everyone's a suspect. So we get everyone in the big lineup as fast as we can. And, I remember the trailer, uh, the reason, <laughs> sorry, I'm gonna slow down. I was just imitating uh, Randy as it is, because he talks really fast, but I remember in the trailer, we, we actually saw, see Randy uh, saying that, and we see all the main characters in Scream 2 going really fast. I thought that was a really cool format in that uh, trailer. But anyways, the thing that I really was disappointed about that Scream 2 was the fact they killed off our Randy. Or is he dead? I know, I keep thinking that in these movies, because it seems like most movies he says, not everybody, it doesn't seem what it seems. 
But I think Irene is dead, unfortunately. <laughs> I was really hoping uh, he would have made it through these movies like this. But it seems like uh, Gail Weathers, Sydney, and Deputy Do seem to be uh, the sole survivors of these uh, movies. But anyways, uh, the story in Scream 2 I thought was good. They went back to the college uh, days. Uh, Derek, which is uh, Sydney's uh, boyfriend, which was Jerry O'Connell, believe it or not. I, I like that as an actor. I really thought he did a really good job. And we had uh, Lord McCuff uh, playing as uh, one of uh, reporters trying to investigate herself what the heck's going on. But we later find out that she's actually one of the ghost faces. So there was actually two ghost faces in this movie, later on. Actually find out in this uh, second one, the second ghost face is actually Mickey with that weird college friend that Randy was really, key point seemed to be uh, that he might be the killer. And he was actually right. I wonder if that's the reason he, he actually uh, died because since he knew Mickey was up to something, maybe something like that. So anyways, in this uh, second one, we find out uh, there are two ghost faces. Again, I say uh, both. But actually, Bill, Billy Loomis's mom was actually the reporter, which I find was interesting. So everything actually ties in quite interesting as it is. Uh, she brought Mickey along. I guess <laughs> what she said in the second one, she was trying to look for uh, some sort of weird psychotic uh, killer through online. And she happened to uh, find Mickey, which found, uh, I guess, a good one, I guess. <laughs> and uh, of course, the villains do not get along toward, towards the end. And uh, believe it or not, Billy Loomis's uh, mom actually uh, shoots him right in the head. <laughs> What is up with that? So anyways, uh, we have uh, two killers and they, they, we're not going to see them in the sequel, I'm pretty positive, unless if there's uh, flashbacks to uh, these sequels, of course. Okay, so after just talking about Scream 2, let's go to Scream 3 now. So this uh, story behind Scream 3 is uh, uh, Sydney hiding in the forest, uh, trying to get away from this space. Of course, that doesn't happen. But this whole concept is uh, going to Hollywood, finding out they're making a staff through, which I'm not surprised. Gail Weather seems to write these books and seem to uh, get into the big screen right away as it is. So the whole point of this uh, story is uh, the cast. They're making a movie and it seems like someone's trying to bring uh, the story to life as it is through a movie script. So that makes it quite interesting more, I gotta say. It seems like uh, this story was more elaborate than this. And I felt uh, what Sydney does or once uh, she comes out from hiding, of course, uh, Deputy uh, Dewey calls her and uh, she finally realizes uh, she wants to come out and try to help find out who's behind these more brutal crimes of Ghostface, what he's actually doing. But the thing I really like about this one too, which I thought was real creative, is the fact they use a Stu's house and it's actually in one, in one of the down stages and they had a big old scene in there, which I thought was pretty cool. I would have thought this would this whole scene with this would have been at the end of the movie. It would have been a really cool way to actually end the movie, but they did not end it that way. So what we have all the, uh, the actors of, that were still alive to an after party, uh, what was his name? Uh, Roman, uh, the, the director behind uh, the new Stab movie. We find out that he's actually the killer in this. And we also find out a lot more than that too, that he's actually a, a lost brother that Sydney never knew. So it, it, there is a brother or sister connection with this, but what is the deal with this? Why is Sydney's past so rough, I gotta say? We we, we had uh, stuff happening with the L Loomis uh, family. We have uh, the mother and the son being murders. And now we actually have a brother that uh, Sydney just found out she actually has. What is the deal with family these days? <laughs> I hope this doesn't happen in normal life. And I found out too, when I went to that 25th anniversary, this story was actually, the first one I gotta say, was actually based on two events of what happened in Florida a long time ago, this as well too. So that makes it creepy as it is, doesn't it? Okay, so our timeline has been 1996 since the first scream, and we were up to the fourth uh, scream, uh, which came out in 2011. So there has been a, a big year gap as it is between these films. And this uh, fourth one is set 10 years later. Opening scene was creative, I gotta say. After watching so many times, I finally got adjusted to it. We had um, certain uh, cameos in this, this as well. We had Kristen Bell, believe it or not, and Anna Packman uh, uh, playing uh, two parts in a style movie. Best friends, some, it seems to be like best friends argument happens and of course uh, one of them happens to stab the other okay <laughs> what's going on there so we actually found out the killer within the first 10 minutes of actually it shouldn't i think i bet you probably one one of the end of the uh, stab movies we actually probably saw in that parallel uh, universe of that uh, time but it seems like it's scream 4 i, I gotta say gave a different direction as, as it is it was seemed like it, it was a little darker too when i think about it so so once again we do have our main characters uh sydney Gail Brothers, a deputy a Dewey coming back once again. And everything seems to really evolve with her again. But it really seemed like uh, these three characters were more in the back a little bit. I wonder if this is what's going to happen in the new film. Because I I know new characters are arriving. And it seems like there'll be uh, more story revolving around different characters. That seemed to happen in this fourth one, it seemed like, too. I kind of felt like that way. Because uh, 
Okay, let's start with uh, uh, Jell because uh, Jell is the seem to be the main character in uh, of the new vicious crimes of uh, Ghostface, and we, she had a whole bunch of burns. Uh, we had uh, Kirby, Olivia, and uh, the list just continues on as it is. We had uh, more cameos this as well too. I thought it was great to see Anthony Anderson and Adam Brody play other the cops in this movie, and actually the Ghostface actually goes after them this as well too. I mean, this Ghostface is going nuts, and I think there's probably more kills in the fourth one than other screen movies as it is what do you guys think do you think that's right i think i'm probably right with that but the story was actually evolved really good it went uh in a really good direction i thought it was real creative uh when the, the story actually reached the stab of thought in the barn after being in lockdown this still this still happens anyways and um it got in more interesting uh yo weather was i uh, seem to be on top of, of wanting to go out there and find out who this uh, killer is and thinking that might the killer might actually be there and she was actually right and this whole entire time, too, I just wanted to keep, uh, point that out because that was a really good part of, of the movie I, I liked. And the story actually carried on from after that. This is where uh, the story really gets more in-depth because it seems once again we get an after party. It's kind of like happening in Scream 3. An after party from this uh, script stab if I'm not going to uh, the house as it is. And once again, you think the boy from might get involved, be the killer as Ghostface, but that's not the case. I'm glad it wasn't the case because I've already done it in the original Scream. You almost want to think they were going to do like a reboot from the original uh, Scream with uh, Scream 4, but that was not the case. So we actually had two ghost faces here in uh, Scream 4. We had uh, Drill Reaver and Charlie. Karen Culkin, oh my gosh. Ch Karen Culkin uh, played uh, Charlie in Scream 4. We haven't seen him for a long time until he actually came to this movie. Uh, we, we never, it was, it's all growing up and everything. I wonder if he egg, egg, got acting skills from his uh, brother, Bacola Culkin, from uh, having this role in this new Scream movie. If you guys can remember uh, the good son, Michael Culkin was it in that a long time ago when he was younger. He was dark in that. And seeing that along with his uh, brother being at Scream 4, I feel like that got me same, feeling that same vibe, how dark he was actually was towards the end of the movie. He seemed like a very nice guy throughout the whole film. Of course, that's my, that's the story. Isn't the movie based trying to throw you off on uh, trying to figure out who these uh, specs actually are? I think when I actually saw this for the first time, I was actually uh, key pinning uh, Charlie. I really thought he might have been one of them. But Jill was a big surprise with me. Uh, towards the end of it for the last five, ten minutes, and then I actually, wait a minute, I think she might be another one. And uh, so we actually had uh, those two, believe it or not, in the screen four. And it's, I really thought the screen four was laid out really good. Uh, from what I heard, too, from uh, the story was supposed to be set off to be, uh, be a little different because they had plans of doing a fifth and a sixth one. Uh, this was around the time when Wes Craven passed away, which was really sad it really hurt uh, it sad uh the movie industry i gotta say though so horror fans this as well too man russ craven is one of a kind and he's definitely missed as it is but yet they're still moving on with another uh, scream 5 uh, franchise and now that we're actually here let's start talking about scream 5. hello it's happening three attacks so far do you have a gun i'm sydney prescott of course i have a gun Okay, so we are set up into this uh, new movie called uh, Scream, which comes out th the end of this week, of course, uh, January 14th. Really excited to see what's going to happen th with this, but if you look over behind my, my shoulder over here, this as well too, you see this uh, poster. I've, I've shown this uh, reference in my last video, what I did with the Scream movie. I, I'm, I'm just don't know why I'm so hooked into this uh, franchise of, of Scream, but what is going to happen next in this uh, Scream uh, franchise? We have the, the players, the creators uh, behind uh, Ready or Not behind this uh, film, bringing us a new film as it is. Kevin Wilson is still signed on to be a writer with this, so we know that, that uh, we, we still have left that, that to determine what uh, Kevin can actually do with a new Scream movie. But Russ Craven is... Uh, I, Russ Craven was a great guy, and I really hope uh, that he's happy with this, this new installment as it is. But this uh, story seems to be set once again... But with uh, Sydney, Gil Weathers, and Deputy Dewey in the back. I wonder if there will be more reflected, uh, like kind of happened in the fourth one. I probably think they probably won't get as much attention as it is but trying to get a new more key, new key players in this movie as it is. But look at this poster behind my uh, shoulder, of course. It seems like it, they're going to set this movie to be a little darker than normal, don't you guys actually think? I like the way that, that this poster looks, though, because... The, uh, the uh, person that you probably saw me and back me uh, for the last 10 minutes or so, uh, you see the lineup lineup on the left and the right. And you have uh, Sydney and uh, our main characters, uh, Dep uh, Deputy Duty and uh, Duty, <laughs> Gil Weathers, this as well. And uh, this is, I just love this poster. It's just beautiful. Uh, we got the sign of Roseboro over there on the side, this as well, too. But uh, once again, this it seems like this is going to be a darker uh, story. 
uh, the way it, it, it is. Uh, what's going to happen with our good spaces is this as well, too. We had on our past, after coming in, covering this uh, timeline, uh, the first one. Okay, so first of screen movie, we had two. Uh, second film, we had two good spaces. The third one is actually one. See, I had the two up, but something was a little fishy with us. See, this is why I wanted to do this uh, time because I feel this actually something connected with this uh, third one that might actually be in this uh, fifth one, believe it or not. I believe something, uh, Stu actually dead. It will Stu actually be back. That's the reason I really question that third film the way they actually did. But I, I, I feel something is off. And I feel something's going to happen with uh, this uh, new film, uh, with something involved with the third film. I know it's going to be involved with all the other ones, but there's something fishy about this. Well, do you think Stu is actually still alive, you think? Leave some comments down below if you uh, got, your guys can. But by the time, I know it's just going to be a few more days until we actually get our movie, the new screen movie. And I'm just really excited for this. It's just a matter of, I don't think there's going to be two ghost poses. Uh, believe it or not, I think this is going to be our first time getting three ghost faces, believe it or not. And it's somewhere on this poster too, if you can't see that in a little detail, uh, they're saying uh, the colors somewhere on this poster. I really do think uh, it might be maybe one or two of these uh, key players in back of us, and there's going to be a mysterious uh, one just as well too, that we don't know about, which is not on this poster, which I know that for a fact probably. Which I really think there might be a third uh, ghost face as it is. And I really think too, as you look back into uh, uh, Sydney and Gil, whether it's in Deputy Duty, do you actually think one of them can actually be involved? I I think one of them might actually be involved in this movie. I can, okay, so this is my prediction before I actually see the movie because I, I do have my ticket for next week as it is. And I, I'm going to a Q&A session with, uh, the, the, on the Thursday show, which will be really exciting. I think Gil Weathers has something to do with this one. I really think she has something to do in this uh, fifth one. I, I was trying to keep pointing if uh, someone were to get involved with one of these uh, three players, I don't think Sydney would. I, I, if Sydney was, I, I think she would be, have a mental breakdown as it is and uh, tag along with two other people to make uh, this movie seem a little off as it is. But Deputy Dude, I, I was trying to think. Deputy Dude, I should say. <laughs> what did I say? Uh, I Everyone seems really suspected in this. And uh, that's like we, we've seen in these other films, just like Randy said, everyone's a suspect, especially. Looking at this person in back of me, it just seems, I think we're going to have one of our main characters actually be a good space for the first time. And I think, if not, I think someone's going to actually die. One of these three characters might die in this uh, 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 film, or maybe two, I don't know. I don't think they're going to kill off uh, Sydney, but if they were to kill somebody off, it would be actually be either Gail or Deputy Dewey. I, I, I'm actually putting my finger on uh, Gail Weathers, believe it or not. So leave your ideas down below. Let me hear what you guys got to say. I, was, I just want to give a timeline uh, because I want, really want to go back and dig up on this uh, Scream franchise where we actually stand up for this uh, new film coming out this week this as well. I, there's a lot going on. You can see a lot throughout this trailer. It just feels like once they showed the first trailer to the second, we are getting more detail out of this. I think they're saying, uh, showing us a little too much as it is in this film. But I'm getting really excited to see this film. So once again, I can start wrapping the things up. I can really talk on and on about this uh, Scream franchise. I'm not going to do that, do that to you guys. So I'm going to wrap this up saying my name is Ryan. Thank you for watching. Make sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you at the next time. Maybe at the screen, screen name. See you guys later. Bye.